So in this video, we're going to do something a little bit simpler than what we did in the last video. In the last video, we sort of derived where the Taylor series came from. But in this video, we're going to use that definition of the Taylor series that we came up with, which was this. And we're going to derive the third order Taylor series for the same function. And it's going to be a lot quicker this time because we, now that we got this formula figured out, we can just plug this in. So this is our formula here for a Taylor series. And basically what it says to sort of review is that and we can represent any function f of x as an infinite series as long as we can figure out its derivatives, which is this term, this term up here, as long as we can figure out its derivatives, then we can get a series representation of any function. We just got to plug this in for n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. And if we, if we do this and plug in an infinite number of terms here, we will actually get back our original function. So let's try and go ahead and apply this Taylor series to our function f of x is 5e to the 2x. So first thing we're going to want to do is just write down f of x. Now we were looking for the third order Taylor series, so the next thing we want to do is find the first three derivatives of this function. So using the chain rule, we're going to have to multiply by this 2. So we get f prime of x is going to equal 10e to the 2x. And then basically we just keep doing the same thing and our second derivative of x is going to be 20e to the 2x. We've got to multiply by that constant by 2 again. And the third derivative, we're going to have to multiply that constant by 2 again. So these are our first three derivatives of f of x. So the next thing we're going to want to do now that we found all these derivatives is just plug in for f of a. In this case, our a is going to be where we want to center it at, which is at x equals 1. So our a is going to be 1. So first we want to find f of 1, which to find this, all we've got to do is plug in 1 for x right here. And then we find f prime of 1. Again, we just plug in 1 for x, and we get 10e e squared. Then we want to find f double prime of 1, 20e e squared. And finally, f triple prime of 1, which is just going to be 40e e squared. So all we're doing here is just plugging in that 1 for the x. And now we've basically got these, this term up here, our, our um, nth derivative terms evaluated at x equals a. We've got these terms. And then these other terms are, are going to be pretty simple. So we can go ahead and find our third order Taylor series, which we're going to denote as t sub 3 of x. And all we need to do to find t3 of x is instead of uh, finding an infinite number of terms here for our exact series, we can just plug in 3 at the top. So we're just going to get, we're just going to go from n equals 0 to 3. So t sub 3 of x, it's going to be pretty similar. We're, instead of going to the infinite term, we're just going to go to the third term and then, and then add all these up. So for our first term, we're just going to look at when n equals 0. So basically, we're going to just take 0 and we're going to plug it in for n here, for n up here, and for n here. And we know that our a is going to equal 1, which is where we're trying to center this at. So knowing that, we can just go ahead and plug those in for our first term, where we're going to get f of 1 on the top, because we've got the 0th order derivative just going to be f itself. And then, of course, we've got the 0 here and our 0 factorial. That's going to be our first term. Okay, next we've got to find our n equals 1 term, and we're going to go ahead and add that. So instead of a 0 here, we can go ahead and plug in 1 for all these n's. So we can go ahead and add our first derivative value at 1 over 1 factorial times x minus 1 quantity to the 1. And basically, we're going to keep doing that same thing to find the n equals 2 term and the n equals 3 term. So for n equals 2, again, we plug in 2 up here. And we get our second derivative term up here on the top. And for n equals 3, we go ahead and plug n in 3 in for all these n values. And we get this final term here shown in the green. So now we're getting pretty close. All we, all we got to do is plug in our, the derivatives that we found evaluated at 1, and then we, and we can simplify things a little bit. So for example, this first term we can simplify because that 0 factorial is just going to go to 1, and this whole x minus zero, 1 to the 0 term, well that's just going to go to 1 also because anything to the 0 is going to be 1. So for our first term here, for t sub 3 of x, we're just going to be left with f of 1, so we bring that f of 1 down from the top here, and that's 
can be the first term in our series. And for the second term, this um, one factorial, that's just gonna go to one. And then for this um, f prime of one, we can just bring down what we found up here. So there's our second term. And for our third term, we know that this two factorial is just gonna be two. So we can throw that down here and then uh, once again we'll take our f double prime of one we found and bring that down. And similarly for our third term here this three factorial is going to be three times two which is going to go to six. So we've got this for our final term and then we can go ahead and bring our third derivative evaluated at one down to here. So that was really it. Now we've, we've got our third order Taylor series for f of x equals 5e to the 2x. So basically we've solved the problem. But let's just kind of take a look back graphically a little bit about what we've done here. So if we wanted to plot this function f of x out, so this um, what's plotted here is just f of x in the black. So if we just want to take the first term of the series that we came up with, that would be our t sub 0 of x, or 0th order term, and that would just be this horizontal line which um, isn't too exciting, but you notice it does match here at x equals 1. So you notice at x equals 1, we match the value using our zeroth order Taylor series. Now if we took the first two terms, as shown here, that would be t sub 1 of x. If we go ahead and plot that out, we'll see that it matches the value here, and it also matches the slope. So at x equals 1, we're also matching the slope for our t sub 1. Now if we took the first three terms here, this would be our second order Taylor series, and we're going to go ahead and plot that out in purple here. And now it still matches the value right here, it still matches the slope right here, but now we're actually matching this concavity as well. So that's our second order Taylor series. And finally, we can go even further like we did when we found the third order Taylor series. We actually, not only did we match the value right here, and we matched the slope, and we matched the concavity, but when we add in this final term here, we also matched the slope of the concavity because as you can see here this um, the concavity is not just going to be constant like it is with the purple the concavity is actually going to change because here it's concave downward whereas up here it's concave upward so this again this is the third order Taylor series if we wanted to continue taking make this more accurate we could continue to take more derivatives and we took it if we took an infinite number of derivatives and got an infinite number of turns in here this our approximation, our Taylor series, would actually become f of x.